Hi, today I want to talk to you about early American fiction and especially Edgar Allan Poe. All right, there we go. Early American fiction. So American writers who began publishing after 1830 are often celebrated as part of a literary renaissance, and their writings are considered the first really mature and significant works by Americans. While the 1830s through the 1850s is, is usually identified as the period when American literature came into its own, the 1820s were actually the years when critics first agreed that the United States had produced writers who wrote distinctively American works worthy of a great nation. This interest in producing identifiably American works and celebrating those works can be called literary nationalism. So the literary marketplace. By the 1820s, America had easy access to British literature and criticism, which, thanks to lax international copyright laws, could be republished and redistributed in the United States almost immediately after publication in London. Technological developments in printing and the expansion in railroads, canals, and other forms of transportation allowed for fast, extensive, and economical distribution of printed matter. And that's the first time we have this in the United States. So this is really, um, these technological advances are key to developing uh, an American literature. Because up until this point, it was just sort of like, you know, pass things around in your town, but we couldn't get things across areas very easily or quickly. Americans became increasingly interested in literature centered on urban life in this period, in large part because of the tremendous growth in the populations of Boston, Philadelphia, and New York, resulting from Irish immigration and the influx, influx of rural people to the cities. So more and more people are coming to America, they're living in cities and working in cities. Newspaper and magazine publishing exploded between 1825 and 1860, providing American authors with new forums for their poetry, fiction, essays, travel writing, and political reportage. Writers such as Edgar Allan Poe, Lydia Sigourney, Margaret Fuller, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and Fanny Firm, among many others, were regularly published in periodicals. And so this is the first time that we have this in the United States. This was a common practice of um, authors being published in newspapers in um, Britain, but this is the first time we have it in the United States um, on a regular basis. So literary movements. Authors frequently communicated with one another. There were multiple instances of direct and indirect influences counter-influences, friendships, and productive disagreements among each other. American authors considered American literature to be part of world literature. Many writers were well-traveled, and American writers trying to create a, uh, tried to create American literary traditions. Many authors, who are today considered canonical, canonical, were widely recognized in their own time, were not widely recognized in their own time. So in other words, people that we think of as famous today, like Herman Melville, Walt Whitman, um, Thoreau, and Dickinson, um, they didn't become popular until the 20th century. Um, and they certainly were not considered popular in um, when they were writing. Sorry guys, had to get the dog down. He's barking. Alrighty, so Poe and Gothic literature. Um, they have Poe, um, a part of what makes literature, Gothic literature, is there's a description of the landscape outside versus inside. There's sinister, grotesque, or claustrophobic atmosphere. The Gothic is um, in, revealed with medieval architecture, spires, walls, castle-like. The sublime is the quality of grandeur in art or nature. There's also the supernatural or metaphysical otherness, and you'll see this a lot with Poe. Um, and Poe also challenges the reader to define rationality. A lot of the, the main characters in his pieces are 
if not insane, certainly bordering on insane, um, certainly quite odd and unusual. Uh, and the descriptions of buildings, pay attention to this, and rooms really suggest states of mind. So it looked deeper beyond just the flat description. There's more to it. It's describing um, uh, the twists and turns that you take in your, in your mind. So the grotesque. This is often called um, literature of the grotesque or gothic literature. And this notion combines ugliness and ornament, the bizarre and the ridiculous, the excessive and the unreal, um, and it's characterized by ludicrous or incongruous distortion um, in appearance or manner. So it's really bizarre uh, behavior, bizarre things happening, unusual, um, unexpected. And that's what we consider the grotesque. Um, Poe on writing. He was interested in the process of writing and what makes writing what it is. And he was conscious of the method. And he is actually one of America's first literary theorists. He's one of the first American writers to talk about literature and American literature. Um, Poe says writers are crafty, planning, rational decision goes into creating what is produced by writing. So it's not this great kind of, I'm just going to sit down and all these wonderful words are going to come out of me. But I'm going to think about this. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to revise it, work it tweak it, change it, to really get the impact that I want. Um, Poe is, was America's major poet prior to Walt Whitman, and his poetry today is considered simplistic by many because of the obvious form and rhyming scheme. The bulk of his poetry was written by the age of 22, so that kind of makes sense with the simplistic. And in the last four years of his life, he returned to writing poems and wrote The Raven and Annabel Lee. For Poe, poetry is itself a way of learning. It in no way employs the methods of logical investigation. It acts only as poetry, and what it reduces to order or brings into the range of comprehension is rendered poetically. Poe is really um, what we would consider today a rock star. He was super popular. People would wait in line for hours to come to one of his readings. But if you look at Poe's life, he never made, he was able to eke out a living as a writer, but he never was comfortable. He was always on the verge of starving, on the verge of poverty. He was always having to live with family members. Um, he never made it um, in the way that we consider that today. His short stories um, did not deal with ordinary life. They were strange and unusual. Uh, they took in there were lots of imagination, mysteries of existence. Um, and he's really looking at the subconsciousness of mental activity. Um, every mind is either half mad or capable of slipping easily into madness. And you will see this, um, I think I have you reading The Telltale Heart, and you definitely see it in The Telltale Heart. But in any number of pieces that you wanted to pick up and read, you would find this. Um, a number of his protagonists would not only go mad, but also be aware of themselves going mad. So that kind of awareness is really odd and strange. So... I believe that's the end for Poe. It is. Um, if you have any questions about Poe, by all means, uh, post them in the questions and comments uh, discussion board, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.